With the large-scale development of industries like AI and cloud computing, the server industry has also experienced vigorous growth in recent years. IDC data shows that in Q1 2025, the global server market reached a staggering $68.2 billion, surging by 99.8% year-on-year, equivalent to doubling. In terms of shipments, a total of 3.446 million units were shipped in Q1, an increase of 19.8% year-on-year, demonstrating the intense current demand for servers. Amid this wave of massive growth, these server manufacturers have also made substantial profits. However, when looking at the global market and the Chinese market, which Chinese manufacturer stands out as the strongest? Based on IDC data compiled for global and Chinese market rankings by revenue. In the global market, the top five are Dell, Inspur, Lenovo, AMD, and HP. In the Chinese market, the top five are Inspur, Xfusion, Lenovo, H3C, and ZTE. It can be seen that Inspur is the strongest Chinese brand, ranking second globally and first in China, making it China's strongest server manufacturer. But Inspur actually has another identity that might not be widely known. Inspur is the world's largest AI server manufacturer, holding over 20% of the global market share, surpassing all competitors. Why is Inspur so strong? Primarily because Inspur possesses full-stack server capabilities. Whether it's general-purpose servers, AI servers, edge servers, liquid-cooled servers, etc., it has them all. Leveraging its full-stack server capabilities, Inspur has deeply entrenched partnerships with numerous major clients, such as Alibaba, ByteDance, and Tencent. These enterprises represent the bulk of server procurement. Winning orders from these companies is more than half the battle. Inspur Information provided the DeepSeek Beijing Ejo Intelligent Computing Center with an AI server cluster equipped with NVIDIA H800 chips, paired with its self-developed AI station management platform. Its AI station platform can cover the entire AI development lifecycle and has already managed over 500,000 GPU cards, holding over 60% market share in China. Inspur information accounts for over 50% of Alibaba Cloud's server supply and over 70% of its AI server supply, making it Alibaba Cloud's absolute top supplier. The emergence of DeepSeek has significantly reduced the cost of large AI models which in turn drives the deployment of more downstream AI applications. This, conversely, fuels the demand for computing power servers. IDC predicts that the global AI server market will grow rapidly from $19.5 billion in 2022 to $34.7 billion in 2026, with an average annual growth rate of 15%. Inspur Information holds the top position in the global AI server market share and deeply benefits from the demand for generative AI and large model training. From previous billion parameter scales to current trillion parameter scales and beyond, the parameter size of large models is becoming increasingly massive, demanding higher requirements for training. Training such models requires growing data volumes and corresponding performance improvements, leading to quadratic growth in computing power demand. Inspur's flagship products, such as the NF5688G7 server, offer nearly a 7x improvement in large model training performance compared to the previous generation. They support the localized deployment of the DeepSeq 671B full parameter model and are compatible with all mainstream chips on the market. Furthermore, Inspur maintains stable relationships with upstream suppliers like Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. Therefore, Inspur possesses very strong advantages across its supply chain, products, and customer base. Later, as the U.S.-China tariff war, trade war, and tech war escalated further, in March 2025, six subsidiaries of Inspur Group, including Inspur Information, were added to the entity list. NVIDIA AI chips were prohibited from being sold to Inspur Information. Therefore, although Inspur ranks second globally and first in China, it still heavily relies on foreign CPUs and GPUs. This is a vulnerability that requires joint efforts from the domestic supply chain, Inspur, and others to address. With the acceleration of intelligence and informatization, the demand for various smart devices to connect to networks is growing larger. Many of these devices connect to networks through mobile communications, driving the popularity of cellular IoT modules. 
This is because any device that needs to connect to a network via mobile communications requires a cellular IoT module. According to CounterPoint data, in Q1 2025, global cellular IoT module shipments grew by 16% year-on-year. Looking at specific manufacturers, Chinese brands dominate the global market. The top five brands are all Chinese. Quectel, China Mobile, Fibacom, Sunsia, and Liurda. Together, these five brands account for 69% of the market share, and all Chinese brands combined likely exceed 80% of the global share. In terms of growth rate, all five top brands showed positive growth, exceeding the average 16% growth rate. In particular, China Mobile grew by 77%, Liurda by 62%, and Fibacom also surged by 29%. Why are Chinese cellular IoT modules so dominant? On one hand, the global IoT market is primarily centered in China, with Chinese connections accounting for half of the global total. Chinese enterprises naturally choose Chinese modules, so China's massive market has nurtured multiple Chinese giants. On the other hand, the cellular IoT module market has become a highly concentrated field. Leading players occupy the vast majority of the market share, making it increasingly difficult for new entrants to capture share. Thus, the market continues to consolidate toward the top players. Chinese enterprises, having grown strong thanks to the domestic market, hold a competitive advantage. Additionally, backed by the strengths of Chinese manufacturing, Chinese companies outperform foreign firms in operational efficiency and production costs. As a result, Chinese companies grow stronger and hold a dominant position in the global market. However, it cannot be denied that Chinese cellular IoT module companies also face challenges, especially geopolitical factors affecting overseas expansion. Without elaborating too much, it is understood that some countries may ban the use of Chinese modules citing reasons such as national security. Moreover, the core of cellular modules is actually the communication baseband. While China can achieve localization in mid to low end baseband's, in a high end baseband domain, non mainland Chinese brands still dominate, such as Qualcomm and MediaTek. This represents a challenge from the supply chain. Of course, as long as Chinese companies continue to invest in R&D, prepare for competition, and provide products that meet customer needs, then in the cellular IoT module sector, foreign brands truly lack competitiveness. Ultimately, this will remain the domain of Chinese enterprises. Currently, only one company in the world can manufacture EUV lithography machines, ASML. Almost all chips below 7 nanometers globally are produced using EUV lithography machines. Therefore, EUV lithography machines represent the pinnacle of global advanced chip manufacturing processes. Considering that EUV technology has evolved through successive generations, driving the progress of chip manufacturing processes, if EUV lithography machines were to stop advancing, global chip technology progress might also halt. Looking at the current situation, ASML's EUV lithography machines appear to be heading into a dead end. Previously, ASML launched EUV lithography machines with a numerical aperture, an A, of 0.33. A larger numerical aperture allows more light to enter, resulting in higher power, better resolution, and the ability to manufacture more advanced chips. The NA equals 0.33 lithography machines cost approximately $150 million each and are currently the primary EUV machines used by TSMC, Samsung, and Intel. However, ASML believes that at the 2 nanometers node, a different type of lithography machine is needed, one with NA equals 0.55. A higher NA means higher resolution, making it easier to manufacture more advanced chips. But these NA equals 0.55 machines have a drawback. They are extremely expensive, priced at up to $400 million each. So far, only five units have been sold. TSMC has stated it is not interested due to the high cost and plans to further optimize the existing NA equals 0.33 EUV machines for use down to 1.4 nanometers before considering an upgrade. TSMC believes switching to the new machines is not cost effective. This is a major blow to ASML. The development from NA equals 0.33 to NA equals 0.55 took 10 years and cost tens of billions of dollars. If no one buys them, the R&D costs would be wasted. 
In ASML's roadmap, there are plans for even higher NA machines, such as the Hyper NA EUV lithography machine with NA equals 0.75, though it is rumored such a machine could cost as much as $800 million. It is imaginable that few manufacturers would purchase such machines, as the cost would require an immense volume of chips to be produced just to break even. Therefore, industry insiders now believe that ASML's EUV lithography technology has reached a dead end. Continuing to push the numerical aperture higher is seen as futile. Instead of increasing NA, ASML should shift to developing lithography machines with shorter wavelengths rather than clinging to the 13.5 nanometers wavelength light source. Shorter wavelengths would naturally resolve issues related to NA and resolution. The scientific community is currently exploring suitable light sources at 6.7 nanometers and 4.4 nanometers wavelengths. However, ASML is focused on further increasing the numerical aperture based on the 13.5 nanometers wavelength instead of pursuing a new research direction. Of course, this remains speculative. Whether ASML has truly chosen the wrong path or whether future lithography machines at 6.7 nanometers or 4.4 nanometers wavelengths are the solution will only be proven with time.